building pads. They're still powerful, still reliable, and still built like a tank. This is the second generation Intel-based ThinkPad P16. To its credit, it looks and performs like the ThinkPads that we've known and trusted for 25 years. The modern laptop landscape is filled with sleek and slim notebooks. Manufacturers put in a massive amount of effort to shave a fraction of an inch off their laptop's profile or make them a gram or two lighter. Meanwhile, the ThinkPad has stayed on its own evolutionary course, prioritizing powerful proven hardware protected with a hardy metal case. This second gen P16 is from Lenovo's high-end P-series line of ThinkPads, which are designed for the heaviest workloads and feature a plethora of enterprise-level security features. ThinkPads are workstations and, as such, have a very wide range of customization options. The P-line in particular has both a broad and narrow focus. Narrow in the sense that it's built for professional, often enterprise-level use, broad in the sense that they want to cater to as many industries and enterprises as possible. There is a lot of flexibility here to maximize the specs to your workload needs. Here's a quick rundown. There are four DDR5 RAM slots allowing for up to 128 gigabytes of memory total with the option to use ECC RAM modules. There are two M2 PCIe Gen 4 slots for SSDs with a maximum configuration of eight terabytes of combined storage. If two SSDs are in use, you can set them to RAID 0 or RAID 1 configurations. The Intel-based ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 has five options for CPU configuration, all in the 13th generation HX Intel Core processor family. The base configuration is the i5-13600HX, sporting eight efficiency cores running at 3.6 GHz and six performance cores running at 4.8 GHz. The max configuration is the i9-13980HX with 16 efficiency cores running at 4 GHz and eight performance cores running at 5.6 GHz. Three of the CPU options come with vPro capabilities, which I'll talk more about later. Looking at the GPU, there's the base configuration of just using the CPU's integrated Intel UHD graphics, but there are also five optional NVIDIA RTX discrete graphics cards to choose from for the extra power. Springing for a discrete GPU is definitely recommended for video work, though the availability of Intel's QuickSync still gives you something to work with even if you're using the integrated GPU, depending on your editing platform. The 16-inch built-in display has an aspect ratio of 16 to 10 and comes in four configurations and covers a wide range of capabilities. All four options feature 100% coverage of the sRGB gamut, X-Ray factory color calibration, anti-glare, and TUV low blue light eye safe technology. Three of the available screens are IPS, while the highest end option is an OLED UHD display capable of 400 nits of brightness, 100% coverage of the DCI-P3 gamut, HDR500 True Black, and Dolby Vision, as well as being an OGM touchscreen. Sitting above the built-in display is a full HD webcam with privacy shutter. There is also the optional feature of a built-in IR camera for facial recognition and human presence detection security features. Continuing on the theme of communication and calls, the ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 has Dolby Voice technology and uses dual far-field mics so that the user will sound as clear as possible while on calls. The internal 2-watt speakers are also compatible with Dolby Atmos. There are a myriad of ports, two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, one HDMI 2.1 port, a 3.5mm audio jack, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, an SD Express 7 card reader, and the option to add a smart card reader. Sadly missing is an Ethernet port, which is my biggest disappointment with this machine. Laptops with built-in Ethernet ports are a dying breed due to most laptops being too thin to have one, as well as the prevalence of Wi-Fi that is fast enough for the majority of use cases. But this laptop is more than thick enough to fit one, and for professional work I find that the stability and speed of a hardwired connection can be invaluable. Of course, you can always use an Ethernet to Thunderbolt adapter, but given the impressive number of options aimed at connectivity, stability, and security, the absence of a built-in Ethernet port feels puzzling to me. For non-physical connectivity, the base configuration includes Intel Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. There's also the option to add 4G, LTE, and slash or near-field communication capabilities. ThinkPads are for work, whatever and wherever that work might be, so there are a lot of customizations at almost every level. There are, of course, aspects that are less flexible, though, namely the package that it comes in. Physically, there's not really much flex here, and it's very solid to the touch. And that also means that there's really not much room for any customization and flexibility in the aesthetics. ThinkPad P16 workstations prioritize build quality and are intended for offices and construction sites, or if you're a video professional, more likely edit bays and on sets. 
The P line in particular is unapologetically bulky with the P16 Gen 2 weighing in at 6.5 pounds and sporting a profile of 1.2 inches. It's a military grade machine with a reinforced magnesium internal frame, a lid made from a blend of aluminum, magnesium, and chromium, and a bottom shell made of glass fiber enforced PPS. When I say a military grade, that is a literal statement, as Lenovo runs a bevy of environmental tests on these machines to meet the US Department of Defense's MIL STD 810G standard. Even the keyboard is liquid spill resistant. I did not peer review a single one of these tests, but I can confirm that the machine feels as solid as it looks. Speaking of the keyboard, I would say that this one felt pretty nice to type on. There's a nice amount of travel and I always appreciate cupped keys. Keyboards are very much a personal taste thing though, so your mileage may vary. And the keyboard on this does have some very love or hate features. There's the number pad, which personally I love. I find them especially useful for entering time codes while I edit, but a lot of people, understandably I guess, feel that they take up too much space, especially on a laptop. The trackpad is centered to the main keyboard, making it off-center compared to the laptop as a whole, and I imagine that feelings about that correlate pretty heavily to opinions on number pads in general. And finally, there is the iconic, notorious trackpoint mouse. It's a holdover from the early days of laptops when manufacturers were still figuring out the best pointer options. The trackpoint remains a part of the ThinkPad brand and has a small, but passionate fan base who love not having to move their hands away from the home position on the keyboard. For video work, I find it next to useless, but as a computer nerd who grew up in the 90s slash early aughts, I find it pretty charming that this vestigial component has managed to stick around somehow. Where the P16 really shines is how it handles its heat management. I spent most of my time in this machine in the best performance mode, which allows the fans to kick into high gear and the system to operate at its maximum safe internal temperature. By the sound of things, the fans are quite powerful, and there is a generous amount of airflow inside the machine. This is presumably thanks to the vapor chamber method of heat management designed to provide consistent cooling to the inconsistent heat generation of modern CPUs that are designed to efficiently trade off processing between E and P cores. It also benefits systems that rely on both CPU and discrete GPU power consolidating the heat management. The thick frame of the P16 Gen 2 has extra internal space for better airflow, allowing the CPU and GPU to work harder safely generating more heat than other laptops could handle. Generally speaking, that means that the ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 will get better performance than slimmer laptops, even if they are using the same components. But if an internal component does break, or even just needs an upgrade, the P16 Gen 2 is one of the more modular and repairable laptops on the market. Do you want a bit more RAM? Well, feel free to buy some, grab a Phillips head screwdriver, and enjoy the freedom of not having everything soldered into place. It's a pretty nifty feature for whoever is handling IT support. As previously stated, ThinkPads have been a go-to laptop for company and enterprise use for decades. Lenovo's maintained the brand's reputation for consistency, stability, performance, and security. Security isn't always a topic that pops up in laptop reviews, but it is essential for a sizable portion of the ThinkPad customer base. If a company is buying a fleet of these machines, well, here are a few of the security options that are available. Starting off, three of the CPU options are on the vPro platform. vPro-enabled workstations include several useful features for managing a fleet of company-owned machines, such as Intel Active Management Technology, Intel Trusted Execution Technology, Intel Virtualization Technology, Intel Hardware Shield, and support for other security platforms like Cisco Self-Defending Network and Microsoft Network Access Protection. Lenovo expands on the vPro platform with their own ThinkShield services. In addition to proprietary software to manage the vPro security options, ThinkShield also adds features like a self-healing BIOS, the Lenovo Thin Installer, Lenovo Patch, Lenovo Commercial Vantage Software, and a discrete security engine chip. On a physical level, there is also a Kensington Nano security slot, a fingerprint reader, as well as the aforementioned IR camera facial recognition and ultrasonic human presence detection. Also, there's always the trusty privacy shutter on the webcam. Though not security related, companies will probably also appreciate the fact that Lenovo works with many of the most prevalent software developers to ensure hardware compatibility, optimization, and stability with as many essential applications as possible. This includes the Adobe Creative Suite, Autodesk, AutoCAD, and VRED, Avid Media Composer, and the Dassault Systems 3D Experience platform. 
Finally, performance. I only tested one of the 2,332,800 potential hardware configurations, but I was pretty happy with how this workstation performed. Our unit is fairly mid-range in comparison to the offered specs, but it still makes for a decently powerful computer. If anyone watching wants to share their experiences with any of the other configurations, well, I bet we could get a spreadsheet going for the sake of being thorough. But in the meantime, here's an abbreviated version of my findings. For context, this was all done in ultra performance mode. I opened up the same projects I used in a previous computer review. This covers the applications Premiere, Resolve, After Effects, and Handbrake, as well as the Codex ProRes HQ, RED, RE RAW, ABC, and HEVC. The scrubbing and playback were smooth, even with my nonsense hodgepodge of the sequence that includes multicams, overlays, GPU effects, CPU effects, LUTs, color grades, resizes, retimes, etc. The machine would get warm, but not hot to the touch while I was using it, but looking at the performance monitor logs show that media encoder exports regularly put the thermal zone in the 60 to 90 degrees Celsius range, and the thermal zone performance for Resolve was an impressively flat, consistent 95 degrees Celsius for all of the exports. By conventional wisdom, that is, at best, on the upper end of safe temperatures for an average laptop. However, all other signs made me feel as if this laptop was well within its own safe operating temperatures. The little bit that I did interact with the computer during export times did not feel sluggish. The sound from the fans was even throughout the exports with no sign of chugging, and the air output from the vents was not as hot as I would have expected. All of that is to say that the P16 is a bit loud when doing resource-intensive tasks. But for the record, that was all done in ultra performance mode, and it was perfectly quiet when doing less demanding things like web browsing, word processing, or file management. For those who do run heavier tasks, Lenovo definitely prioritized consistent performance and thermals over low fan audibility. I also have some hard numbers in the form of export times for various softwares and codecs. The results were respectable, resource utilization was consistent, and again, the fans unabashedly worked to keep the internal temperatures manageable and stable. The export times themselves will obviously vary depending on the chosen components, but based on forums and other reviews I've read, the consistency of resource utilization and heat management should hold true across the board. I'll be honest and say that I hadn't used the ThinkPad since I was in school, although there are plenty of people in my life who swear by them. It was fun to get my hands on one again and confirm that ThinkPads are indeed still ThinkPads. Not every laptop needs to be wafer thin, and it's refreshing to see one that isn't. The ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 isn't going to be the computer for everyone, but for people or businesses that need mobile workstations that can be spec to overkill levels, can securely handle confidential sensitive data, have modular replaceable internal components, can handle some wear and tear, and slash or can be easily and fully managed at scale by a professional admin, the ThinkPad P16 Gen 2 is a good computer to look into. But what do you think? In my years of experience on the internet forums, the ThinkPad customer base has always been vocal about their opinions on the brand. Feel free to post your experiences with these laptops in the comments, how long they've lasted, what managed to break one, what didn't manage to break one, and especially any defenses or criticisms of the track point. I'm Scott with B&H. Keep it fun out there, y'all.